Our story begins at Breitling Industries, where we see a Mr. Breitling chilling out. Hey, I'm Mr. Breitling, and I think the environment's a pretty cool place. When suddenly, ooh, I'm the ghost of Ted Kaczynski, and I say that the Industrial Revolution and its consequences, yada yada yada, um, is bad. Hey, Mr. Kaczynski, you're not even dead, eh? Ooh, well, it's because I'm a force ghost in prison. Ooh. <laughs> and then Dr. Kilgore, Mr. Breitling's chief scientist, enters the room. Hiya, friend. Remember me? I'm your friend, uh, Mr. Kilgore, Dr. Kilgore, and I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Duh. And then, like, there was this Russian KGB guy, he enters the room. Yakshimash, ya jestem Popov, the Russian spy who gives you the terrorists for a price. And then they all said collectively, And together, and together we use the power, the power of the to save the environment. The environment. Hey, I'm just in it for the money, comrade. After Dr. Breitling found his newfound friends, he then went to bed, where he was then visited by three ghosts. The ghost of Olympics past, present, and future. Golly, who are you guys? Ooh, I'm the ghost of the Olympics past, and I say that in this house down under a weather, because this is Sydney, Australia, you're gonna need air conditioning, because it's gonna get really hot, and you wouldn't want people dying of heat stroke. And I'm the ghost of the Olympics present, representing security. You wouldn't want athletes dying like in Munich that one time. Ooh. Spooky. Well, actually, the plan was to kill the athletes, so, uh, yes. Ooh, and I'm the ghost of the Olympics future, and I say the Olympics need chlorine because it's an electrolyte, and electrolytes are good for you. So after this revelation, we then head over to the good guys. Hey, I'm John Clark, and I say we make a team of counterterrorism units made up of, uh, good guy countries. Hola, S.A., and I'm Dink Chavez, the protagonist, and I think that's a neato idea. <laughs> Meanwhile, at bad guy land, Popov uses his terrorist connections to start terrorist attacks throughout Europe. They're in, like, Switzerland, and they're like, hey, give us the money, and Team Rainbow are like, fuck you, bitch. And then they're in, like, Austria or something, and they're like, Hey, give us the stock market codes, you capitalist bitch. And then Team Rainbow are like, uh, fuck you, bitch. And then they're in, like, Spain, and they're like, Hey, release our friend from custody, or we're gonna kill this child. And Team Rainbow are like, I'm gonna shoot you on the dick, bitch. And then the IRA are like, give us your unborn child, or we're gonna kill your unborn child. And Team Rainbow are like, uh, fuck you, bitch. And then you have John Clark, the good guy leader, and he's like, Ah, oh, we gotta do things by the book, people. So Popov orchestrated all of these terrorist attacks to raise awareness on international terrorism to get a contract at the Sydney Olympics. So now his use has finally come to an end, and he's taken to a little ranch in Kansas. And the ranch is owned by none other than Mr. Breitling. Well, howdy, Popov. We heard that y'all started all these terrorist attacks to raise awareness on international terrorism so that you could get a security team contract for the, uh, Sydney Olympics. Mm. Oh, yes, that is right, comrade. That is what I did, you tuck tuck tuck. Well, how about we give you a big Ram Ranch welcome, big boy? How about I Popov you off? <laughs> Uh, that is kinda gay, comrade. Not gonna lie, tuck tuck tuck. Uh, screw you, guy. I'm going to kill you and I'm going to tell the CIA. After finding out that Ram Ranch is full of a bunch of dirty hippies, Popov goes to his arch-rival, John Clark, of the CIA. Oh, Mr. Jonathan Clark, there is a bunch of hippies on this Ram Ranch and they're planning to kill everybody. Don't they know that kills people? Oh, really? Then, uh, how did you find out about this Ram Ranch? Oh, because I was helping them start the uh, international terrorism attacks, tuck tuck tuck, and now they're going to kill the Sydney Olympics, tuck tuck tuck. So then the Rainbow Boys, they go down under Sydney down under, and they're hiding in this dark damp room. And then like this guy, he walks into like this water sprinkler area, and he's like a bad guy, and then Team Rainbow are like, 
they switch on the lights and they're like, surprise, cockfag. And then, like, this guy was like, oh, you got me with the evidence as well. Whoopsies. And then the boys are like, oh, no, the bad guys are escaping to Brazil. And now we've got to catch him to bring him to a court of law. Because we do things by the book. I still can't believe you shot that guy in the dick in Spain. So then the Rainbow Boys, they head down to Brazil to catch the bad guys. And then the bad guy is like, oh shit, he caught us. <laughs> and then the Rainbow Boys are like, you know, we could bring you to a court of law to bring you to justice for trying to kill everyone, like billions of people, but uh, if you hippies like nature so much, then maybe you're just going to have to live in nature in the Brazilian rainforest. How about that? You fucking uh, libtard. Looks like you were wrecked with facts and logic. And then they all lived happily ever after. Ooh, I'm the ghost of Ted Kaczynski, and even though we lost, I can say that this whole return to pre-agrarian society is a pretty neat deal.